couple of days, we heard that Foreigner had decided to change bass players. And I said, well, can you find Nick's number? I know he has an apartment in New York. Jerry got his number. And I rang him up. I said, mate, it's Rick. He said, oh, I didn't know you were in New York. I said, well, I am. I said, and I'd love to audition for the band because I love what you're doing. He said, do you know this stuff? I said, yeah, I've had your two albums in my car for the last two years. I said, I know your songs pretty well, actually. He said, well, that's great. If you've got a bass. I said, no, but you've got some Fender basses, I know. I said, can I just borrow one? And I'll just come down to the studio. He said, come to SIR Studios and we'll run over a few things with the band. And I hadn't met the other guys in the band, Lou, Dennis, Al, Ian. And um, I went through, I just literally went there and I said hi to them all. And they said, what do you want to do? I said, well, you name a song and I'll play it, you know. They said, well, Double Vision. I said, we did Double Vision. That sounded great. And we did Hot Blood. That sounded great. Feels like the first time. I mean, it was just like this feeling of like something was really right about the way we were together. And Dennis just got off his drum kit and walked towards the front. I was standing down on the floor in front of the band playing. And he just walked up and he said, I want Rick in the band in front of everybody. <laughs> and I just had the biggest stupid grin on my face because I couldn't believe what he was saying. And Mick said, oh, Dennis, no, no, you can't do that. We've got 70 bass players who want to audition for the job. You're you know? showing your poker hand too soon, man. I know. <laughs> and I said, listen, that's so, look, it's okay. I said, what do you want me to do? He said, just be here for the next 10 or 12 days because then we'll get you back and we'll run over arrangements vocals, you know, all the more technical stuff rather than just playing the song. And I did that and that went really well too. Uh, there was a general feeling that I was doing very well, but I they couldn't give me the job. Like this. There was, I mean, all the best, best, best bass players in New York and all over them wanted that job. And you can't blame them. I mean, Foreigner's first two albums were so big and they had already just gone, wow, boom. You know, they were big time. And I thought, oh, this is just incredible. You know, I thought, well, I'm just going to hang in here. So I called my wife in London, and we had two very young children at the time, a little girl called Nikki, who was five, and a little boy called Daniel, who was about 18 months. And they both got <laughs> chicken pox at the same time. <laughs> my wife said, Rick, please come home. I'm going nuts. I can't cope. This is really difficult. I said, Lynn, how can I leave New York? I said, I'm really close to getting this job. I want it so bad. She said, please, come home. I gave in, and I did. I flew back to London, and I was home for one day and one night. And the next morning, as I was waking up feeling groggy and jet-lagged, the phone rang, and it was Bud Prager, Foreigners Manager, and Mick Jones in the office, asking me how I was feeling. And I said, pretty groggy, actually, guys, to be honest. They said, well, you're going to feel great. I said, well, why? She said, well, you've got the job with Foreigner. I went, you've got to be kidding me. I said, this is amazing. Because my wife is in here. We were in bed still, and my kids were on the bed with us. And they were all jumping up and down with excitement because they knew Daddy had just got this incredible job. And I said, this is life-changing. I said, what do you want me to do, guys? I said, we want you to come to New York. I said, when? Today. I said, oh, no. You're kidding me. I said, today. I said, today. I said yeah, but we've got to go into rehearsals. We've got to start the new album, which was going to be Head Games. <laughs> so I literally went to the airport to British Airways desk, and I walked up to the counter, and I talked to the lady. I said, hi, my name's Richard Wills. Um, I think there's a ticket for me to New York. And she looked at me and she just smiled. She said, Mr. Wills, we're very, very sorry, but the Concorde is full today. It's sold out. And I just looked at her. I said, Concorde? I said, I don't go on Concorde. I said, I always sit in the back of the plane. You know? <laughs> he said, well, not today you don't. I said, well, what, what could, what's the choice? She said, would you like to sit in first class on a 747? And I've never been in first class in my life at that point, believe me. I said, would I mind? I said, I don't think I would mind at all. And that's what happened. I mean, literally, they put me in first class on a 747. 
And in those days, back in 79, upstairs was a lounge area, right, where they had a bar and, you know, comfortable seating where you could just hang out because it was, what, seven and a half, eight hours to New York from London. So I thought, well, that's a good opportunity to go up there and celebrate. <laughs> I did. And you did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've got to do this. So I was telling the crew and, you know, the stewardess, I said, you know, the reason I'm going to New York is because I'm joining this band called Foreigner. And they said, oh, my God, we love Foreigner. <laughs> Cold as eyes, you know, it feels like the first time we know all their songs. So I said, I think we should have a drink. So we, we out came the wine, right? So I thought to myself, well, look, I'm going to New York. I probably won't arrive till about 6 30 in the evening. I don't think I'll be working today. I'll be okay. I'll have a drink, few drinks, which I did. And I got to New York, picked up my bags, and one of the road crew was there to meet me. And they said, Rick, we're going straight to rehearsal, you know. I said, oh, my God, no, please. I said, I've had way too much to drink on the plane. I said, take me to a coffee shop immediately. I've got to straighten up. He said, it's no problem. Come on. I said, we've got two big cups of black coffee, strong. <laughs> and we went straight to SIR Studios again. There was the band waiting to go. And we went straight into Dirty White Boy, Head Games, all those songs that we just had to get ready and be in the studio in a couple of days at Atlantic Studios on Broadway in those days. And it was just amazing to be part of something that was big, really happening. And you, those excitement was incredible. It really was. And that's how I became part of horror. 